Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be installing the Xpion 360 battery monitor into our 2020 Mantis so that we can have a better idea of the actual consumption and actual availability of what is left in the batteries uh, as we're out and off the grid. The first thing that I need to do today is I need to drill a hole right here in the front of this cabinet. That's going to allow for the data cable to run through and connect to the battery monitor itself. Now one thing that you might notice that's a little bit different in my Mantis, I have like a mid-2020 production year Mantis. And so what that means, there was a couple of changes where I have the sink plus the stove. It's not the single unit. Because of that, this is a little bit different. Some of the older Mantises actually have an open slot here uh, for a little bit of storage. So if that's the case, you need to find a different location for where you want to store and place your battery monitor. Now, in order to be able to get the data cable from the monitor down over to the batteries, what I've done is I've taken off the cover for the Truma system as well as the cover of the battery compartment and here's why. I'm going to run the cable back there. I'm going to drop it down to the back side of where the Truma system is. There I'll be able to grab it. There's a hole on that wall towards the rear and I'm going to run that data cable through that hole into the battery compartment. Alright so what I'm going to do is take my drill. I've got a three quarter inch step bit and that will just help me from a pilot perspective all the way uh, to getting it to three quarters of an inch. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just looking to have enough room to get that data cable through the hole so we can run it and fish it down to the, to the batteries. Now I need to test. I need to make sure that this cable will fit through that hole, and it does. All right, so I've got enough wire in there for now. What I noticed is that up under the sink, there's actually a point behind the sink where you can stick your hand back there. You'll need to do that in order to fish the wire through the back of the cabinetry down towards the Truma system. One thing you'll notice that when you're doing this, this cable is very long. I'm guessing it's like 30 feet, 50 feet, I don't know. But it's way longer than you actually need. So what I'm doing now is just feeding it through the top because I know the end needs to be right here at the top so it hooks into the battery monitor. From there, I'll figure out where to bundle and store the rest of the cable down below where it's out of the way and not at risk of getting broken or pinched or anything like that. So as you can see, I've now run all the wire through. I've just got this little bit hanging out. So what I'm going to do is connect this end of the data cable to the back side of the battery monitor. It's grooved. There's only one way you can do it. So I'm going to go ahead and attach it. Now we're good to go.
All right, now you can see we've got everything mounted here for the face of the battery monitor. Now I need to go get the rest of that wire, run it through the hole, and put the shunt on the battery and make all of those connections work, and then we'll be able to test out the system. So the challenge that I've run into here is that the ring terminals that are on this red wire for the positive side of the battery, it doesn't fit over the post of the battery terminal. So I'm trying to find a different option with a bigger hole so I can just make a new wire and be able to run it to the positive side of the battery. All right, so what I was able to figure out is that I needed a larger ring terminal for it to actually fit on the positive battery post. So a neighbor of mine actually had a whole assortment of them, went down to his house, grabbed this one that's slightly larger and it fits perfectly on the positive post of the battery. All right, so now I've made a new wire here with the new terminal that will fit over the battery post. Now I'm reconnecting my ground wire. So I have two batteries. You need to have all your negative cables, which in the Mantis are the white cables. You need to have all the negative cables going to the P minus side of the shunt. So that's what we're gonna do. Put on our washer, our lock washer, and our nut. And then 11 16 wrench on this model. And just tighten it down. Okay, now we're gonna take the B minus side of the shunt and attach it to the negative terminal on one battery. I'm referring to this as battery one because you're gonna to wanna to take the, what was the red cable, now is my new black cable. You're going to want to take that and attach it to battery two if you're running a two battery setup. Yep. Hi, Daddy. Okay, hi, bud. All right. Now we'll take this, run it to the... And I did make... One thing to know is that the red cable that was originally uh, designed to be attached to the shunt is a little short. And so I was having a tough time. So when I made my new wire using 18 gauge wire, I made it a little bit longer so that I can easily access it to the battery post on the positive terminal of battery two. Hey, Gaga, can I take a picture of you after you go, guess? Of course. Okay, got that. Put the nut on the post. Nine sixteenths wrench. Are you done with the video? Not quite. We're done with this piece though. At this point, the last thing that we need to do is run the wire, this data wire, through the hole in the side of the Truma compartment over into the battery compartment and then we'll attach it to the front of the shunt. Okay, so if you recall earlier, I was talking about how much cable there is. So what I'm going to do, I've wound it up like this. I'm gonna put a couple of zip ties around it and then stuff it on the side of the battery compartment. Okay. Oh, hi, it's me, Cass. It's Cass. Connect the data wire to the shunt and we should be good to go. Oh, look out, Cast! Yeah. We got power! Look at that! 
we've got power. All right. Oh, look at that. Isn't that cool, Cass? What do you say? What do you think, man? Now that the battery monitor is installed in our 2020 Taximantis, there's one other thing that I just wanted to address because I couldn't figure out what to do with it. It's this piece right here that comes with the battery monitor. Um, my understanding is that this can help make it a little bit easier uh, when you're mounting the shunt. As you saw, I mounted mine directly to the negative terminal on the battery. Um, but apparently you can use this as well, but it's not required. Considering that I had to make a new wire anyways to fit on the positive terminal of the battery, I decided to forego using this piece. Once again, I just wanted to say thank you for tuning into the Mantis experience. I hope this video was helpful for you as I was looking for videos. I noticed there just wasn't a lot out there. Um, but again, thanks for tuning in. If you're starting to find uh, some of this content valuable to your Mantis or your RV experience, uh, please feel free to hit the subscribe button down below. And uh, I'm going to keep trying to put out videos for common questions and, and modifications that I see being done uh, and, and things that we're going to do to ours. So again, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.